we present My Music. A musical panel game devised by Edward J. Mason and Tony Schreier. And here to introduce the teams is Steve Rates. Thank you. As the old dance band leaders used to say, I'd like you to meet the boys. <laughs> Four boys, one girl, to be precise, because apart from our scorer, Leonie Lawson, we have John Amis, Frank Muir, Ian Wallace and Dennis North. <laughs> John, I wonder if you can work this out. Why should this music make me think it's Wednesday? Partly a linguistic thing, this. Could, what's that? Something about... It's yes. nocturnal serenade. Yes, that's right. What's the language of serenata notturna? Italiano. Yes. So, it's, a, it's, it's Italian like, night time. I keep about. on thinking it's Thursday, as one hippopotamus ah, said to the yeah, other, but it's... No. Frank knows this. Night time in Italy. When it's night time... In Italy, I don't know. It's, it's, oh, it's yes. Wednesday over here. here. The audience on it. When it's night time in Italy, it's Wednesday over here. You You've right. got... It was in the back of your mind, John. That's, that's fair yes, enough. Yes, it was. Yeah, for that. Yes. Because he was asked the... me whether there was such a song, and I said no. <laughs> 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 the music we heard was from the Serenata Notturna by Mozart. And, of course, that was my music, and the featured performer there was John Amos, and I'm very glad that I can welcome John to our studios here at... Thank you. Good day to you. You're looking uh, wonderful, I might say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the barbers who say, sit down, young man, <laughs> and it's infuriating. I always say, thank you, old boy. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit about uh, John Amos, and uh, I know you... Uh, uh, in my research, you started off working in a bank, and then you were selling gramophone records? Yes, I worked five and a half weeks in a bank. Did you ever work in a bank? I did. How long did you spend? 31 years. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you only get 10 for Well, murder. I got out after five and a half, and I, I think that was very lucky. One of the other things that I read about you was that uh, you uh, were an orchestra manager, and you turned pages for Dame Myra Hess. Yes. What a, what a thrill. She was lovely. She, Mara Hess, she started, as you know, this National Gallery concert soon after the war had started. Yes. And ran them for, I don't know, five, six years, five and a half years. Uh, Amazing. And uh, it was wonderful. It was a, for people then, you know, it was a tough time. And these concerts and the chamber music were a wonderful solace, a love, wonderful recreation, a wonderful time to forget the war for a little bit. Yes, yes, I imagine so. Um, you, um, of course, my music is running on this program and you've had a, a long involvement with that from uh, 1974 to uh, the conclusion in 1994, so 20 yeah. years. How did you get involved with my music? Well, I used to do some programs for BBC Transcription Service. Right. And they were the people, for example, who supplied ABC right. with with all those things. My word, my music, yep. whatever. Yes. And uh, I used to have lunch with, with the fellows, and one of them was one of the producers, right. uh, or helped to twiddle the knobs, you know. Yes. And uh, I, at lunchtime, you know, I used to expand and tell anecdotes, as I'm afraid I still do I'm in my anecdotage. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, he said, well, you know, you're stuck for, for somebody. They tried one or two people. Uh, and this fella said, well, why did you give John a go? Because he's good at telling stories. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he knows the symphony stuff. Right. Symphonies, and sonatas, that's very concertos, important. Which, which the others didn't. I mean, Frank and Dennis uh, didn't know uh, Shostakovich from Schoenberg. Yes. Uh, but they knew a hell of a lot about ballads. Uh, the popular Dennis side of things. knew every film and all the music in, yes. in any film. He would say things like, I mean, to me, it was uh, esoteric, like, like Schoenberg's uh, 
whatever. Yes. You know, Dennis would say, oh, yes, um, let me see. Faye Ray sang half a chorus of that in a film. That's right. With Wallace Beery. Yes, uh, that's blah, right. Blah, blah, blah. He knew everything like that. He knew everything. Frank knew all the ballad operas and everything like that. And their knowledge was, was, was uh, very considerable. Yes. Did you record one program in a sitting or was there a couple of shows done? Two. Two. Two at a time. Oh, okay, fine. And like uh, like um, Spicks and Specks, which I did the other day. They do two, two in a night. Same, right. Same as we did with yes. my music. Yes, and um, fun time? Was it a, you know, a pleasant... Oh, yes, it was great fun. We never met uh, outside the studio. Yeah. I mean, Frank, Frank and Dennis knew each other. Of course, they'd worked for 13 years on Take It From Here. That's right. <clears throat> but we never met. I would occasionally see Ian Wallace perhaps twice a year uh -huh. uh, at a party. But not socially, you wouldn't be no. meeting each other. So it no. was really when you got together... At the it was an encounter. Yes. And that's very important, I think, I same with interviewing. Yes. Sometimes when I had a, an interviewer in, in line, he would say, could we have lunch together? And I'd say, well, it's, if you insist, yes. but I think it would be much better if we just met in the studio because then it would be a fresh encounter Exactly. And you wouldn't say things like, as I was telling you, on the lift coming up. That's right. That's right. Um, it always appears to be a happy s scene when they were recording this program because it comes across that it's everything's, you know, terrific. Was, yes. was, was the audience participation, did that make it? And that helped. Yeah. That helped. But we four got on very, very well. We were a bit chary of Steve sometimes. Right. Steve had had a heart attack, you know, when he was quite young, in his 40s. Right. And his personality, he was a bit inclined to, to get uh, bad-tempered sometimes. Was he? Um, not usually on the show, but, but he was. And, and Frank and Dennis used to tease him, and he used to tease them. <laughs> and uh, they sometimes answered back in a, quite a rude fashion. Right. There was a wonderful time when Steve said, um, today I'm going to play you four bits of music. I've been writing mood music, and uh, I haven't thought of the title, so, and so I'm going to play them to you, and then you've got to think of a title. Right. <clears throat> and when he played it to Dennis, he said, now what, what would you call that, Dennis? Yes, um, derivative. And still he didn't stop using his own music. <laughs> but that was a lovely put down. Very funny. Very funny indeed. Now, um, my music uh, is, is to me uh, a wonderful uh, radio program which uh, tells you, it tells the listener a lot about music. I mean, a lot of people don't know uh, many of the things that come up. And sure. when you listen to it, you think... I didn't know that, you know. I think it's very informative. Yes. Very informative. Also, in those party pieces at the end, yep. I certainly uh, thought it was a marvellous opportunity to present little snippets of music of, that people might know, might like, if they knew it, if they heard it. That's right. But they didn't. St um, Steve would sometimes say, John, don't you want to give the public what they want? And I said, no, I want to give the public what they might want if they heard it. Well, that gives us a perfect introduction to one of those snippets of music that uh, you sang at the end of one of the shows. Yes. And it's a Scottish song uh, called The Cows. So let's listen to this piece with uh, Steve Race introducing. John, call the cows, will you? Call the cows. I, I love this song, but I do apologize to Ian and any other Scots people because I don't really know how to pronounce it. So it's a Sassenach version. <laughs> Call the yows to the nows, call them where the heather grows, call them where the bunny rows. My bunny dearie, the hawk the mavis evening sang, sound and cloud and woods among, then a falling letters gang, my bonny dearie, cut a to the nose, cut them where the head of There you go. Oh, it was 
lucky I kept the daytime job, wasn't it? <laughs> but the pauses are quite good. Very good indeed. Now, um, And it reminds me also of um, how do you get the top notes. I once asked Harry Seacombe, how yes. do you get the top notes? Yes. I wear tight trousers. <laughs> Very funny man, Sir Harry. Um, John, the, um, those songs, you, you would pick those... We all chose our own you, songs. You all chose your own pieces. That's and right. Uh, that's right. Well, Dennis yes. used to come up with some really funny... Dennis was a, a real research man. He, he used to go to the BBC light music variety mm -hmm. and go through all the old music hall songs and things like that. Wonderful. And he came up with some wonderful things. Now, um, you're here in Australia. What, have you been to Australia many times? or I came first in 1975. Right. And I think I've been four or five times. Obviously, you enjoy it. And I had a lovely time in 88. It was the year Lord Harwood uh, masterminded the Adelaide Festival. That's right. And I sold the ABC, to my surprise, uh, the idea that they might like to have a POMS view of their Adelaide Festival. And they, 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 they fell for it. And I did about 20, 25 broadcasts in one month. It was quite quite hard work, but I enjoyed it enormously. It was a good festival. It's there. a wonderful festival. Yes. The your association, of course, uh, you have had a, 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 a connection with Australia w through a, a great Australian performer. Tell us a little bit about the uh, pianist. Ah, this is Noel Mutant Wood. Yes, he was my greatest friend uh, for five years. Um, and I had a lovely time with him. He was a wonderful pianist, and he's, he cut his own life short. And I, I find it difficult to forgive him sometimes. Yes. And I sometimes used to feel it terribly on a... If it was a lovely day, I thought, God, Noel would enjoy this. Yeah. This silly, yeah. silly so-and-so. Yeah, exactly. But he had this uh, terrible tendency towards t suicide. He had several cracks at it. And his boyfriend... Uh, he was queer, although, uh, do I need to say I'm not queer? No, I probably don't. <laughs> uh, but I'm not. And, but um, he had a boyfriend in, in the latter, latter five years of his life. And the boyfriend was always saying he was ill. You know, oh, my head has got so bad. Do you think I've got a tumor on the brain? Mm. And Noel knew a hell of a lot about music. And he would usually say, oh, don't be silly. You know, you haven't got it. Or you've got this and, and, and knew a hell of a lot about it. Yes. But um, this time, Bill, his pal, said he was feeling rotten, and uh, Noel said, thought it was nothing. But it turned out to be a peritonitis, and he died. Oh. And Noel felt guilty. Uh, and also, at that time, his career wasn't as high as it should have been. Mm -hmm. um, it was a time when the Festival Hall had just opened, and Dennis Matthews, his rival in a way, mm -hmm. had had 10, 12 dates. And Noel had only had one, and so he thought that perhaps he was he was he was career was going badly. Yes, and so I think the combination of that, and also his tendency towards suicide, mm. some of the queers at those days, some of the homosexuals, thought it was wonderful to die for love, mm. and there was Noel doing it. Damn it! All right. Well, look, we're going to play a, a piece which is the uh, Tarantelle in A flat by Chopin and uh, Opus 43. Let's hear what it sounds like. Good.
Newton Wood, who uh, passed away in 1953. And that recording of Chopin's Chopin's Tarantelle in You know, his, a, his mother was a formidable lady. She had a dress shop in Bond Street in London at one time. Really? And she, she was a very craggy looking old bag. And I think she was a or she could have been a prototype for Dame Edna. Right. <laughs> she was very, very Dame Edna-ish. Yeah. And she had an awful habit with uh, young men whom she liked of... Um, <coughs> it was a sign of affection, but it was painful sign. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll say. And you, another thing which is interesting is there's a long, young authoress, uh, a music lady called Sonia Orchard, who's written a book, uh, a novel, which is about the life of Noel Mutant Wood. Right. And it's coming out, I think, early next year or maybe later this year. Harper Collins are doing it. All right. Now, well, speaking of books, you've got a book too, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. I should have flogged my own first. You should. I? You should. <laughs> it's called My Music in London, 1945 to 2000. Right. And half the book is reviews of the great people who were around then, because I was London music critic for the Scotsman. Right. So it's full of reviews of people like Bruno Walter, Callas, Boris Christoph, Horowitz, uh, you know, all, all the chaps. And to each one, I've added what I called hindsights. Mm -hmm. That is anecdotes and filling in uh, material about those. Well, it sounds people. like it's a good read. It's a good read. It's quite fun. If people were interested in uh, purchasing it, where do you suggest? Well, the best thing to do would be to write to me in right. England. Okay. Uh, right. Because I publish it myself. I sent it to 13 publishers. Right. And they all said, oh, very nice read. Enjoyed reading it. But um, sorry, times are hard. We don't yeah. want to publish it. Yeah. So I published it myself. Good on you. So the address to write to. Yep. Can I do that? My word. Yes. My word. You mean my, <laughs> you mean my music. My music. <laughs> um, John Amos, two four letter words. 17 Eccleston Square, E-double-C-L-E-S-T-O-N Square, which is London SW1V for Vivaldi, 1NS, 1 no Stockhausen. Good. Done. Well, that's that's done. So that's easy. Or you can get it on Amazon.com. Oh, yes. Yes. Or they can get it through, um, what is it, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. On, on the net. Yeah, Amazon.com. And it's £20 with the postage. That's very good. That's terrific. Now... You took over, uh, you weren't the original panellist or a original panellist member, but you took over from, um, actually, David Franklin passed away and Owen Brannigan for a short time before he passed away, and uh, then you took over. So you did you know these people? I went to the show a couple of times because I, I liked the show, but right. I never dreamt, of course, I was going to be in it. Yes. And when I was there, David Franklin knew that I was there. And he em embarrassed me and and the <laughs> other panellists and made it very difficult to edit because he said, I don't know the answer to that one. Well, he had a very deep voice. He was an opera singer, was he not? He was an opera singer. He was a bass. He was very good. Yeah. Um, things in Fidelio, for example, or Sparafucil mm -hmm. in uh, Traviata, no, in uh, Rigoletto. Right. Yeah, he was very good. Good singer. Good yeah. singer. But yeah. he had to give in. He got a terrible tumour in his throat. Uh, which eventually killed him, mm. I think. Mm. But he was in the show, and I, I can remember the first time I went, uh, he was telling a story about how he used to sing in a choir, and it was the Cambridge University Madrigal Society, which was always known as Cums. And then he went to live in Birmingham and joined the Birmingham University Madrigal Society, which was always known as the Birmingham University <laughs> Madrid. <laughs> Very well said. Quite Wonderful. Nice. Um, tell us a little bit about um, Ian Wallace. Ian Wallace, well, he, I think he has the most wonderful voice. Yes, very popular and, on this stage. And uh, he, he's funny, he's, you know, he doesn't read music. He doesn't? He doesn't read music. There are quite a lot of, of singers, mostly the bass uh, uh, male singers, um, uh, I remember Tre Trevor Anthony, who was in some of the uh, Benjamin Britten works. Right. And I said, oh, Trevor, it's amazing. You don't read music. He said, well, I was down the mine, wasn't I, boy? <laughs> <laughs> but um, Dennis Norton, I think, is the, is the one I, I liked 
uh, best. I mean, as a performer yes. in our show, because he's t he's a way of turning things, of teasing us. He's got such a and wit. his knowledge yeah. and his wit. Oh. I once couldn't. Uh, well, I eventually recognised a piece of music as being Bartok's miraculous Mandarin. Right. Dennis, quick as a flash. Oh, is that the t sequel to the Clockwork Orange? <laughs> <laughs> Another time we were asked, what's your favourite sound in all music? And Dennis said, my favourite sound in all music is the sound of the bagpipes. Pause. Fading away into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> it is brilliant. Yeah, very, brilliant. Clever, very clever. Frank was very funny. I think Frank was funnier in print than he was in the show. But he was always clowning, clowning around, and uh, he, was, he was very good fun. He was. But Ian's top notes, I thought, were the wonderful thing. You know, when he came to the end of some ballad or something, there was a point in where the singer can either go down for the last note or he can go up. And we were always just gesticulating with our hands, <laughs> you know, encouraging him to take the top note. And his top F and his top G was the, one of the most beautiful vocal sounds I think I've ever heard. Yes. He's a great guy. Yes. Of course, he's wonderful in the Gilbert and Sullivans. Um, and he was wonderful in the things that he did at Glyndebourne, Dr. Bartolo in uh, Bar Bar Barber of Seville. Right. And um, tell me now, um, what do you do, uh, seeing you're not involved with my music now, how do you fill your day? Do you, you write or...? I write, yes. I got sacked uh, last year from a paper called The Tablet. Mm -hmm. which is, a, a, on the whole, a Catholic paper. I've been their music critic for 15 years, but they gave me the push because they said they wanted somebody younger. Right. Of course, I am 85, you know. <sighs> uh, but it was nasty of them to do it, and, and they only just did it before the legislation came in saying that you can't discriminate people because of their age, mm. either because they're too young... Yes, exactly. Uh, or, ..or too old. Yeah. I mean, I don't think uh, we... We thrive on older people here because this is our, you know, our bread and butter, our, our, yes. our volunteers, and yes. and many of them are over eighty. Yes, and uh, oh, but it's fine, you know, the radio stations and the television people, they they're all the time sucking up to the young, mm -hmm. as it might be. Exactly, uh, and the and the opera companies are trying to desperately trying to fill get bums on seats, you yeah, know, from young people, true. but most of the audience are over fifty. Yeah. They are. Like your audience here. Yeah. Well, they're the ones with the and money. And why don't they play to them a little bit more? Exactly. Exactly. No, uh, I, I just, um, I can't understand uh, the thinking of some of them, but uh, we, we can't change it. No. Mind change. you, we have got a lovely magazine in England called Oldie. Do you know about that? No, I don't. And that's run by Ingrams, who used to run, uh, was editor of Private Eye. Ah. And, uh, and, and that is, it's a very good mag. Is it come out, what, weekly, monthly? Uh, monthly, rather uh, sporadically. Yeah. Is it a glossy? Uh, it's quite glossy, glossy. yes. And, it, and, it has and it's some, called Oldie. It's usually worth reading. So we, when you, some of your uh, listeners go overseas... Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Perhaps they do. Yeah, oh, yes, somebody's just waving a, uh, a, a, an, an article about a, me. Oh, this is an article on you. There you go. It's Mischief called, Maestro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in Oldie? Yes. And I write um, profiles for them from time to time Terrific. about people like Janet Baker. And uh, I did even did one of a film star who, whom I happen to know. Um, God, what is her name? Uh, Louise Reiner. Oh, yes. Do you remember her? She, she, was, she was a, a she, very she was, early on. In she won the Oscar mm -hmm. for the best... Uh, female actress. I mean, fe female actresses. Yes. Most actresses oh, are female. female. Yes, yes, that's true. Yes, right. um, but she got the the Oscar two years running. Yes. And I don't think anybody else has ever that done it. That was back in the thirties. Yes, it was. One was a film with Paul Muni. That's right. Uh, a Chinese epic. Yes, I can't remember the name, but I know the name. The ra no, the rains came. That's something else. Mm. Something I forgot. Um, anyway, look, it's been a delight having you with us. An absolute delight, John. Okay. Um, we, um, we've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about my music. We've talked about writing. We've talked about your friend, Noel Mutant Wood. Um, I just want to thank you so much for coming into the studio. Oh, it was a pleasure. And uh, I know that our listeners will get an absolute kick from hearing what you've had to say. We're going to uh, 
build this program into a special and uh, we'll uh, run a, a full program of my music after this. But uh, on behalf of, can I extend our very warm, sincere thanks to you for making Thank you, time Alex. available. Thank you. Thank you. John Amos, I've been speaking with.